Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Ethan Ashley, and I'm currently a music student at the University of Texas at Austin. Today, we're gonna to be unpacking what's in my case. So currently I use the BAM New Trekking Alto Sax case. I got it for around 550 a couple of years ago. It's held up pretty well. It has this hard shell in the front with a, a big zipper pocket. It has two really well-made backpack straps on the back that are fairly comfortable. And then it also includes this pouch that unzips and has a rain poncho for the case. You just fold it over, kind of like this. I can probably only count on my fingers the amount of times I've used the rain pouch, but it has come in handy when I've needed to use it. The other main selling point for this case is that it's compact enough to fit in the overhead bins on a plane. Um, I did in fact take it carry on one time and the flight crew didn't have any problems with it. Getting into the case, I really like the big zipper pocket in the front. It can hold a lot of things and it's expandable. Right now I have it fully expanded, but you can condense it down. Although I keep my iPad in my backpack right now, I could put an iPad in here along with many other things. When we unzip the front pocket here, there is a little bag here to keep some things and then another pocket. Currently I keep my breathtaking strap in here. I've used a size medium in the black, it's just the standard one. And then I have a reed case. I use the Pelican case um, and I keep a few Daddario reed cases in here, a little Boveda humidity pack, and then a hydrometer to watch the humidity. And then I have a little pill bottle here. It's a, it's a bigger one, if you can tell. I use this to soak my reeds in, and although it's not watertight, it's pretty light and compact and easy for me to carry around. The other thing that I have in the big main pocket is a pouch, which I keep my berry set up in. I don't currently have a berry case that I'm, I'm using, so I have to keep it around somewhere. Just in case I did need to play berry at some point, I have the setup handy on me. It has my mouthpiece, my ligature, and my legere in it and it's just in this little uh, microfiber pouch. Like I said, this case has a bunch of little compartments, so in this little thing, I actually keep an air tag attached to it so I can track my case at all times. And then inside the little pouch here, I keep two things. I currently have the Boston Sack Shop multi-tool. It consists of a little reed file here and then a bunch of little screwdrivers on the other side. And then it actually has a little spring hook here if I can get it out. Whenever like a, a spring gets out and I can't get my finger in there, it's in a tight little space, this is really helpful. And it's TSA approved, so if you did need to take it on a plane, you could. And then the other thing I have in here is a Reed Geek. I have the black diamond version, which I really like. I think it was about a hundred bucks when I bought it a few years ago. And then let's see what we've got in this liner pocket here. I currently have a little Legere microfiber cloth not sure where I got this actually, but it comes in handy every once in a while. And then I have a little pouch. I really like these pouches. I think I've gotten them from a few sunglasses um, and then also uh, key leaves sells a few of them. Um, but I've just got a bunch of reeds in here. I've got a few old vens that probably still work, but I don't really play those anymore. And then I've got a few unpackaged, still in the, the new plastic, uh, reserve the Dario cane reeds. Oh, player circle code there. And then I've got a few Van Doren blue box. I think these are three and a half, yeah, a few of those. Let's see what else we got here. Cork grease, never know when you need that. Got a few extra legeres in here. I've got a few pencils and a Sharpie here. You never know when you need to label some reads. I don't use paper very often anymore, but in case I did need it or someone else needed it, I have some. I have a few mouthpiece patches in here. I have some clear BG ones, which I really like, and then a few of the New breathtaking mouthpiece patches, which I wasn't a big fan of, but I didn't really try them out for very long. Right now I stack two clear ones on top of each other and that seems to work for me really well. I carry around a second screwdriver, which has a few different attachments. Um, you can take this thing off and switch to a larger size. And then it also goes between the Phillips and Flathead. The Boston Sax multi-tool pretty much covers me in all areas, but if I needed something bigger, this works really well. And then I have a few of these ear spasm uh, reed finishing cloths, which 
Um, he has a video on his channel I'll link below um, that has to do with these. It's essentially really fine sandpaper that's used at the end of the reed breaking process just to polish the tops of them. And then I've got a cork tuner in here, which you never know when you're going to need it. A pair of these little kitty scissors, which I can't tell you how many times I've used these. If you don't have kitty scissors in your case, you should get some. I think that is all for the big pocket portion of my case. Let's dig into the inside. It has a little slot for the neck, a spot for the body, obviously, and then a larger pouch where I keep my everyday use items. Ever since around high school, I've had the Yamaha Custom X1, and I got it used on Craigslist, which... Sounds a little sketchy, but I love this horn. It was nice and worn in when I got it, and it has played wonderfully for me ever since. I used the key leaves on it, and um, if you haven't seen my saxophone care video, I will link it up in one of these corners and in the description down below. But I love the key leaves products. I have the vent vines, and I had the, um, the end plug, but my end plug broke, so the vent vines are not in use right now, and I need to order a new uh, gap cap. I currently use a gold-plated G1 neck, which isn't original to my instrument, but I got it off of eBay. Um, necks are really a feel thing, and I really like this one. In the pouch here, I keep a retainer case, which has my Ligon Lip Saver in it. Um, I've had this specific one for quite a while now, and knock on wood, I haven't lost it. And it doesn't really wear down. I also keep an extra unmolded one, just in case I do ever lose that one. I have a backup. And then I keep a little hodge swab in here. I think that's what it's called. Just a, a silk swab. I, I think I've had this one forever. I really need to get a new one. I really like the, the BG ones. Um, I have a BG one for my tenor and my soprano. And then I have my mouthpiece, which this case actually came with this uh, little mouthpiece pouch, which I have fallen in love with. I use the Selmer Concept, and it just slides right in here, and it keeps it safe so it never gets... Uh, broken or knocks into anything. And then I have the Ishimori gold-plated ligature um, in here. And then the last thing in here is a Leger reed, which right now I am using the uh, Leger Signature Series 375. This is an old one. I actually have written on here, random find, but maybe good. And I think I used this one for a while. And then when the uh, French cuts came out, I used a French cut four for a little while. Um, and then I think I actually chipped one and that led me into a bit of a scare because I had a lesson coming up and I needed a read. So I found this one in a cabinet and it said random find, maybe good. And turns out it is probably the best leisure I've ever played on. So yeah, that's what's in my case. I try and keep it fairly clean and organized most of the time, although I do have a lot of stuff in here. Um, I do have my own tenor and soprano saxophones, which I have separate cases for those, and I keep just the essentials in those cases. One day I do want to upgrade to a alto and soprano double case, just so I can keep everything condensed, because I do play a lot of alto and soprano. I will try and link as many of these products down below in the video's description. Just so you know, if it is an Amazon link, it is an affiliate link that if you click on it and buy the product, a part of that revenue goes to me as an Amazon affiliate. I really hope you enjoyed this video because I really enjoyed making it. Please consider hitting the subscribe button down below. I'll see you next time. Peace.